I'm Tisha Bader with Shalom TV's news update for Wednesday, April the 2nd, 2014. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry will not be meeting with Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas today. Kerry canceled the meeting with the Palestinian leader after Abbas yesterday signed an application to join 15 international bodies. Last night at a PLO meeting in Ramallah, Abbas said on television that the Palestinian leadership has unanimously approved a decision to seek membership of 15 UN agencies and international treaties, beginning with the Fourth Geneva Convention. Abbas also reportedly added to that that while the Palestinians appreciated the American-led peace efforts, Israel was procrastinating. There are those who said that the move by Abbas last night was in response to Israel not releasing the last round of Palestinian security prisoners this past Saturday night. After Abbas's move, John Kerry spoke to reporters and said that he was still committed to doing what he could to push the peace process forward and that it was premature to judge the situation. He stressed that while it may seem like Abbas's application to the 15 international bodies was a sign that he had given up on talks. None of the bodies Abbas applied to involved the United Nations, and therefore Abbas had kept his promise to carry in that regard. However, the Times of Israel reports that some of the bodies Abbas applied to are affiliated with the UN and include the UN Convention Against Corruption, the Vienna Convention on the Law of Treaties, the International Convention on the Suppression and Punishment of the Crime of Apartheid, and other UN treaties. Palestinian Authority Foreign Minister Riyad al-Maliki reportedly handed the letters of application to UN Special Coordinator for the Middle East peace process Robert Seri this morning. In his remarks to reporters last night, Secretary of State Kerry also stressed that the U.S. was still on board to help move things forward, but that it was up to Israel and the Palestinians ultimately to make something happen. Kerry said the United States is proud and ready and willing to be a facilitator in this process, but the leaders on both sides have to make the decisions, not us. It's up to them to decide what they're prepared to do with each other, for each other, for the future, for the region, for peace. And we will do everything in our power. This all follows reports yesterday that a possible deal might be in the works to extend peace talks between Israel and the Palestinians, a deal that would have included the release by Israel of the last round of 26 Palestinian security prisoners, plus the release of an additional 400 Palestinian prisoners, many of whom would have been women and minors, and the release by the U.S. of convicted Israeli spy Jonathan Pollard. And Jewish groups here in the U.S. are weighing in on the events of the last few days. Abbas's turning to international bodies last night was denounced by the American Jewish Committee, who called the move counterproductive. AJC Executive Director David Harris said Abbas's latest ploy endangers the peace process and is a slap in the face of Secretary of State Kerry, who has worked tirelessly with both Israelis and Palestinians to achieve peace adding that so many opportunities for peace over decades were lost because of so many Palestinian no's. Isn't it high time, Harris asked, for a Palestinian yes, and stay the course to the end in achieving with Israel a two-state settlement. And the Conference of Presidents of major American Jewish organizations expressed their concern, saying that Abbas signed the applications knowing that it could sabotage peace efforts. Conference Chairman Robert Sugarman and Executive Vice Chairman Malcolm Holine said of Abbas these actions came after statements attributed to him that he would not recognize Israel as a Jewish state, that an agreement would not include a declaration of an end to the conflict, and claims and continuing to insist on the right of return for Palestinians to Israel. They said, we hope that the applications will not be submitted to the UN organizations and the proposals will be properly responded to so that negotiations can be extended through the end of the year to enable the parties to work out the complex issues involved. And the Anti-Defamation League responded to the possible deal that was reported about yesterday, which was said to include the release of Jonathan Pollard, which the ADL said should be based on humanitarian grounds and on the strong U.S.-Israel relationship and not intertwined with any potential resolution of the Arab-Israeli conflict. ADL National Director Abe Foxman said Pollard should not be seen as a potential bargaining chip to pressure Israel to continue to negotiate 
in the absence of a true commitment on behalf of the Palestinians. Meanwhile, Pollard apparently waived a parole hearing that was set to take place yesterday. The Associated Press reports that Commissioner Patricia Smoot said the hearing had been scheduled for Tuesday, and a parole commission administrator named Stephen Husk said the hearing was to have been held at the prison in Butner, North Carolina, and that Pollard, who is imprisoned there, would have attended. The AP said that Husk declined any further comment. The Times of Israel reports that Poland's parliament now says that shechita, or ritual slaughter, performed there non-commercially non is allowed. According to a local Warsaw Daily newspaper, a position paper on the matter was sent to Poland's Constitutional Tribunal today, which stated that in its current form, Polish law does not permit penalizing slaughter for internal Jewish communities. Last year, Poland had ruled that it was unconstitutional to slaughter animals according to Jewish and Muslim ritual without stunning them first. It still maintains that ritual slaughter is not allowed on a commercial level, but that it, quote, allows to carry out the slaughter only to the extent to which it meets the needs of community members. The letter was sent to the tribunal in connection with an appeal made by Poland's Union of Jewish Religious Communities. The Jerusalem Post reports that archaeologists in Israel have completed a massive excavation that has lasted 15 years of a huge biblical fortress dating back to the time of King David. The Spring Citadel is 3,800 years old. Its excavation was led by Professor Rani Reich of Haifa University and Eli Shukrun of the Israel Antiquities Authority in the city of David National Park, which is inside the old city of Jerusalem. Director of Development in the City of David, Oriah Dasberg, said that the citadel had been built to protect and save the city's water supply. It is the largest Canaanite fortress to be found in Israel and, according to the Antiquities Authority, believed to be the largest known fortress predating the reign of King Herod. The site is now open to the public. The Ruderman Family Foundation is partnering with the University of Haifa to create the first ever American Jewish Studies program in Israel. This master's program will teach Israeli students about the diversity and evolving American Jewish community and its importance to the future of the state of Israel. Starting this fall, a class of 21 graduate students will begin the one-year program, which will survey Jewish American immigration, history, as well as modern foreign policy, governmental structures, and the religious makeup of U.S. Jewish communities. The students will also travel to the U.S. for 10 days and spend time at New York University, as well as visit sites like Ellis Island and the Tenement Museum in New York City and the National Museum of American Jewish History in Philadelphia. The pioneering program helps to improve dialogue and understanding between Israeli and American Jews. Foundation President Jay Ruderman referencing the recent Pew Research study that pointed to young American Jews' affiliation with Israel was weakening, said this was the biggest threat to Israel's existence and that nurturing that relationship and that connection was vital. And turning to our Shalom TV programming for tonight, at 8 o'clock, the new program Made in Israel finds host Nitzi Cohen taking viewers to an Israeli wine exhibition at Chelsea Piers in New York City to learn all about Israeli wines and how you can get them. And with, and with the 2014 baseball season beginning, longtime New York Yankee PR director and television producer Marty Apple talks about how a Jewish boy from Brooklyn has a love affair with the Yankees and writes a comprehensive history of the team called Pinstripe Empire. That's tonight at 9 o'clock on L'Chaim. And then at 10 o'clock, former Jewish baseball players Ron Blomberg of the Yankees, Art Shamsky of the Cardinals and the Mets, and Elliot Maddox of the Yankees, Mets, and Rangers talk, about, talk with journalist Richard Deutsch about their Jewish identity and being Jewish in the major leagues from Temple Shalom in Greenwich, Connecticut. That's all coming up tonight here on Shalom TV and ShalomTV.com. And that's Shalom TV's news update for Wednesday, April the 2nd, 2014. I'm Tisha Bader.